So today we're going to look back at the Yelich trade and we're going to look at one person in particular because he was the one that was hyped up the most in Lewis Brinson. Obviously with Christian Yelich, the trade from him going to the Marlins to the Brewers in return, the Brewers sent Jordan Yamamoto, Isan Diaz, Monte Harrison, and of course, Lewis Brinson. Lewis Brinson at the time immediately became the number one prospect in the Marlins farm system. And since then, it really hasn't lived up to the hype. So today, what if Lewis Brinson became better than Christian Yelich. Let's see what happens. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you do, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, in the comment section, let me know some other players that maybe just haven't lived up to the hype. If you look at the trade, none of those players really lived up to the hype. I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now, man. It's, it's not great. But let's talk about Lewis Brinson today. So really quick, let's just take a look at Lewis Brinson in the minors because before he became, you know, even before he was traded to the Marlins he was actually fairly good you can see a 283 average 350 on base percentage and 847 OPS and he was traded in 2018 so since he's joined you know he hasn't besides this season right here hasn't really done well in the minors so most of the damage was done before he was traded so this is kind of where I'm thinking he is as a player when he was traded so back to 24 years old obviously it's only been three years since but since those three years it's been pretty rough. So we're going to stick him in center. I know he's been playing kind of the corners all across the outfield, but we're going to stick him in center. He's going to be 75 overall, really getting carried by that fielding and speed stolen bases because I looked at his numbers too. He was stealing, you know, in the mid teens for stolen bases. You know, it's just the big thing with him was strikeouts. Strikeouts are a really big issue for him. So let's see if we can fix that. And that's kind of why I lowered the vision and discipline. I might even lower it a little bit more now that I'm like really looking a little bit more at his numbers. Let's just let's just bump it down just a, just a little bit more. We'll, we'll bump it down there and that, that should lower him a little bit more. But you can see 74 overall, 56 contact, 61 contact versus lefties. 49 and 46 power and yeah the vision and discipline went down but we'll, we'll be okay with how everything's looking so there it is there we go we've got the fielding and the the speed really carrying this overall because the hitting stats don't don't prove to be a 74 overall so let's see how it goes he's got 99 potential really living up to that number one prospect in the marlins organization and before we even start let's go take a look and see where he is ranked as a top prospect number seven in baseball so the one thing I am going to do to make sure I'm, I'm going to send him down one season. Uh, if, if the CPU calls him up, actually, let's just do this. The CPU is in control of everything, by the way. I'm not I'm not controlling one thing. I'm letting this be kind of like a, a normal career sim. And they do have him in triple A. So there it is. There we are. That's how we're going to start it. Let's see what happens. So an OK season for the Marlins, 70 and 92. But I'm not, we're not worried about that. I want to see the man. Oh, Lewis Brinson. 27 at bats in the majors okay four hits not great he did have a home run though two rbis two walks and 11 strikeouts so you know what strikeouts were an issue and have been an issue for him throughout his career so yeah not the best intro to the bigs but still considered a, a rookie after the season so he he went up quite a bit though look at those contact numbers the power all that good stuff so not too bad i definitely expect him to start next season it looks like he's going to be a starter. And I mean, if you think about it, him being 27 in real life and being with a team that has like Marte in center, Aguilar doing pretty solid in real life. You've got Jesus Sanchez. You've got Jazz Chisholm. You've got a pretty good team coming up. Like if Lewis Branson can figure it out and play the outfield for the Marlins and do well, I feel like that it's, it's not... It, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever, you know? So maybe something works out here, but again, we're kind of backtracking going back to when he was traded to the Marlins at 24 years old. So let's see what happens as we continue moving through everything. And maybe he gets better and becomes the player that everyone expected from him. So it looks like they're going with Branson in center. Obviously, Monte Harrison was also part of that trade. So we'll see. Maybe maybe he takes over. You know, who knows? But we got J.J. Blade. Oh, I totally forgot about J.J. Blade. Put him in the lineup too. This Marlins team could be nasty in a few seasons. So, all right. First full season in the bigs. It did say he was a top prospect. I wonder if he's moved up from seven at all or if he's actually moved down. Oh, no. He's number four. Number four. 
Okay, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're at the deadline and I wanted to check something and I always forget to check like the player of the month and stuff. And I noticed that this month, the month of June, actually, since we just finished July, we could potentially have a Lewis Brinson July player of the month, but rookie of the month, Lewis Brinson hit 360 with two home runs and 12 RBIs. That's at the end of uh, uh, June. Let's see what happened in July. Let's take a quick look. See if anything happened here. July, it was JJ Blade. Okay. But let's just take a quick little peek. It looks like Brinson is an 80 now. Holy cow. Holy cow. Okay. And he's hitting 280 with a 347 on base percentage and an almost 800 OPS. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, that, that's a pretty big change. And you're looking at it. Those hitting stats aren't that great. Everything besides his contact versus lefties under 70. Ooh, okay. Maybe we created a little bit of a monster here. I didn't think those hitting stats were good enough to do that. All right, so the season, not great. That was actually worse than last year. But we had an award, and it said Rookie of the Year. And then I saw who won it. JJ Blade with a 237 average, 26 doubles, 25 home runs. A sub 300 on base percentage and an OPS at 751. Next up was Elmo Sharp, who had 24 home runs, 22 doubles, a 226 average, and a 272 on base percentage. OPS under 700. And then in third place came Lewis Brinson, who had 17 home runs, almost 40 doubles, a 277 average, a 345 on base percentage. And just, just one point shy of an 800 OPS. 20 stolen bases as well. And he didn't win Rookie of the Year. Excuse me. How? How? He got robbed. He got absolutely robbed. Robbed. That's Rookie of the Year. Tally it up. That is Lewis Brinson's award. The award system is rigged in MLB The Show. So first, first like full season in the bigs. It says he's cold. 82 overall the the fielding is definitely carrying it we all know that by now fielding and speed are very very important in mlb the show they really boost up a rating but you can see the hitting stats they're they're decent contacts not too bad power numbers not too bad vision discipline they're, okay still not great but not too bad you know keep saying that but not a bad season 20 stolen bases 17 home runs 40 doubles i would definitely take that so there we go Center fielder looks locked up for Brinson. Let's keep moving forward. Maybe check in in a few seasons once he gets a little bit more time under his belt. Unless he starts winning more awards or anything. Maybe like an all-star appearance or something. So I'll keep checking in. See what happens. And we'll go from there. I'm in the next year. Just past the all-star break. and Or I just passed the deadline. And I went to look at the all-stars. Louis Brinson. He's an all-star. Ooh. Okay. Louis Brinson hitting 309. With 30 home runs, 17 home or no, 30 doubles, 17 home runs, but 309, almost a 400 on base percentage, almost a 385 on base percentage. I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, round up that much. But a 923 OPS, he's slugging 539 in a park that's not necessarily hitter friendly. Miami's not necessarily the most hitter friendly park. I mean, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. So. Let's go see what Yelich is currently doing. Obviously, it would be a little bit different because Yelich is a little bit older. But I looked for his 26-year-old season, which was the first year that he went to Milwaukee. And that was in 2018. So in 2018, 36 home runs, 110 RBIs, a 326 average, 400 on base percentage, and 1,000 OPS, right? So this was the same age that Lewis Brinson currently is in the sim. And look at look at the difference between the home runs. You can tell that Milwaukee is definitely a little bit more friendly for left-handed hitters compared to Miami. And um, just a hitter more hit, hitter-friendly park compared to Miami. And uh, yeah, so there it is. There we go. Let's see what happens. So we'll, we'll kind of keep checking in on how he is comparing to Yelich. I didn't even see what Yelich is doing like right now. Let's see. Pretty good season. Yeah, pretty good season, I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely pretty good. But I would say Miami would be pretty happy with having a center fielder put up these numbers at 26 years old and still getting better. Ooh, I'd be happy. I would love to have a center fielder like that. So let's keep moving forward. Um, we'll see if he wins an award at the end of the season. If he doesn't, 
that I won't show you guys anything. I'm more waiting to see these big time awards start happen for Brinson. We're in the next season, and I felt like this was a little bit important to point out. Yeah, he is an 87 overall, great fielding, decent speed as well. Contact numbers versus lefties went down a little bit, and uh, numbers went down offensively as well. On um, base percentage took a hit, average slugging, OPS. It's a little bit of a down year in his 27 year old season, which would actually be his this year season in real life his 2021 season so we'll see what happens i mean he's still young he's still got a couple years of team control as well and i mean potential i would assume is still fairly good it may not be 99 still we'll take a quick little peek oh it is still 99 so he's he's still got a chance to grow i'm surprised it hasn't gone up or down at all i guess it couldn't go up it would just go down but yeah, so no awards, nothing like that, but um, you can see last season, briefly, you kind of saw that he had a pretty good season. Career high for doubles, um, home runs, or this year he had a career high for home runs, even though it wasn't the best of seasons for him. But yeah, so far so good. I think I'm going to wait to hold, like not show you next year, but I'll show you season five because I believe, yeah, see, so this will be season four in 2025, then 2026 will be his contract year. So let's check in in 2026. Okay, so it actually was 2027. That is his con. That is his contract year, and you can see 30 years old. He's 92 overall, and so far so good. He's a doubles machine. He did have that one down year in 2024, but outside of that, he's been really good, really good. He's been kind of floating between the top three spots in the lineup. And you can see the team's definitely changed quite a bit. They've brought in like Ed Howard. They've let Jazz Chisholm go. They've traded this guy for that guy. I know they don't have, oh, they do have Monte Harrison still, but they don't have Isan Diaz. Obviously, Jordan Yamamoto is now with the Mets, I believe it is. So like none of the pieces really are sticking around besides Lewis Brinson. But at 92 years old, 92 years old, ooh, if he's playing the in the majors at 92 years old, I want whatever he's having, but 92 overall, 30 years old, and um, the numbers are still pretty good, pretty good, especially since he's really only been in the league for like five, five and a half years, and he does become a free agent this year, so let's see what happens, budget-wise, could they keep him, yeah, they probably could, they definitely could, it just really depends on what their plans are, so let's get to the regular season, I guess I should show you his attributes as well, because I didn't really give him much time to look it over. But good contact numbers. The power numbers still really aren't there. But the vision's gone up. The discipline. The clutch. And of course the fielding and the speed have always been there. So yeah. Not too bad. He's also been a, like a stolen base machine. At least 20 for most of the seasons he's been in the majors. So not bad. Not bad. So oh. I did want to point out one thing. He did lead the league in hits in 2025. That was another thing. That's about it though. So there it is. Let's see what happens in his contract year. So the Marlins continue to just suck. Um, sorry, it's just it's just not changing at all. Stolen base league leader for Lewis Brinson. And uh, again, a really strong season. And he's improving, which is awesome to see. Not so much versus lefties. So he's really struggling with versus lefties, which is kind of weird. But so far, so good. And he, he's been like just nonstop every game. So doubles went down. Home runs went up. And then, of course, obviously the league leader in stolen bases. But, I mean, an 821 OPS slugging, 459, 363 on base percentage, and a 278 average. Let's take a look at the war for the, the career. 33.5. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Obviously, it's not going to, like, bring him up to, like, the top of the charts for war all time. But, I mean, for the most part, that's, that's, let's, go, let's go take a look. I was going to say, it's got to be pretty high there. Let's see here. He is number 11 in the National League. And he'd be up to the top, kind of in the American League. So, I mean, not bad. Not bad. Let's go see where he uh, go makes his uh, big money move to. Or he stays in Miami and continues to sit in, what, fourth or fifth place in the division. So, let's see. Let's see what happens. And big, big, big news. Are we going to get anything here? Let's see. He is in free agency and they don't have an offer on the table for him for him. So do they have somebody else in center field that they could go with? Connor Scott is the guy they want to go with in center field. Is there anybody else in the farm system that they're looking to move? Simon Maziati. Uh, I mean, if that's if that's what they'd rather do, it looks like Lewis Brinson's going elsewhere. Let's go. Let's go see where he ends up, because clearly 
They don't want him anymore. And they're not they're not gonna give me a They're not gonna give me a notification. Oh, he signs with the Angels? Ooh, okay, hold on. Is Mike Trout still with the Angels? I went the wrong way. Is Mike Trout still with the Angels? Or is he like at the point where like he's kind of fall falling off? I mean, he's still an 87. So like where does Brinson fit in? Where does right field maybe? Maybe right field, unless they start moving Trout down. Interesting. He went to the Angels on a seven-year, $217 million contract. Whew, okay. There it is. That's the move. Sorry, sorry, Marlins fans. You, you, you messed up there. All right, first season with the, the Angels. And let's go take a look and see if there's any awards for him. Doesn't look like it. I'm not even gonna look at league leaders. I'm not really too worried about that, but let's go to the Angels. Played in 150 games, 150 hits, okay. 151 hits, 32 doubles, 24 home runs, 255 average, a little a little below his norm, a little below his norm, but um, still putting up decent numbers. He's up to a 98 overall, and I mean, he's gotta get better for a couple more seasons, right? At least hitting wise. I mean, the fielding stats are basically maxed out at this point. But um, I didn't even check his quirks in a while. I mean, look at all these. Ooh, okay. All right, so there it is. Lewis Brinson in all his glory is taking over the league. And I mean, it's going pretty well. It's just the Angels didn't make it to the postseason either. So things aren't going great for Lewis Brinson and postseason appearances. It's just like, it's just not good. It's just not good at all. So let's keep moving forward. Let's keep going. Maybe next year we'll, we'll do a, a check-in. I probably should have done a check-in this year. But maybe next year we'll do a check in just to kind of see how like he compares to what Yelich is doing because I'm just kind of interested to see. Just just kind of interested. Okay, so now I want to find Yelich, which I'm assuming he's still with the Brewers because of the contract. Mm, no. There's no way they traded him. And he shouldn't have retired yet because I, I would have seen him retire. So let, let's see where he is. He's with the Nationals now. Okay, so the contract did expire. He's 37 years old. And let's let's kind of check. Okay, so 2025, he would be, what, 33? Because that's four years from now. And in real life right now, he's 29. So that would be, he'd be like, yeah, he'd be 33, 34 at that point. So not too bad. I mean, these two these two seasons are absolutely insane, right? Like 362 average, a 450 on base percentage, and 1171 OPS. But I mean, yeah, these are these are insane numbers. There's just Yelich is just insane. They're like, what what are those numbers? Um. So okay. So yeah, his contract just expired. So this is his first season with another team. Okay. So yeah, he's still doing extremely well. And okay, so that that's that's pretty good. I mean, I haven't even I didn't even really look at what the totals were for Brinson. Like, I didn't even see like how many home runs he has. 150, 250 doubles. Okay, 1100, almost 1200 hits. It's not terrible. And you know, the average on base percentage still really strong. Like, is he a Hall of Famer with these numbers? Definitely not. But like, I feel like living up to the hype. This is a lot better than what. Is currently going on right like this is this is something that you would want from your center field there especially when you gave away you know one of your top players at the time and then of course you know there were other pieces is San Diaz Monte Harrison Jordan Yamamoto but if you were getting that kind of production from Lewis Brinson I think you'd be pretty happy okay second season let's go take a one more little peek at Lewis Brinson power numbers are going down which is a little unfortunate you know you can see less home runs for sure which maybe the power numbers are just going down as a result of the fact that home run numbers went down but again you know stealing quite a few bases OPS still sitting around the career average I kind of want that one just like 35 home run season close like you know maybe close to 200 hits I'm still waiting for that one just huge breakout season kind of like this one we had this one but since then, it's just been the norm, right? Like, it's been consistent. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with consistency. But I'd like to see that 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 one breakout year. So let's see if we can get it in the next couple seasons. If not, maybe maybe that's the best we've seen of Brinson. All right, we're 10 seasons in for his kind of career. 10-year service time. Going down a little bit. You know, still just 
the definition of consistency like this is this is what we're getting right like 791 70 i thought we were about to have a chris davis-esque season where he hit 791 for ops once again or had a 791 ops but i mean yeah this is this is where he's sitting this is the best we're gonna get for lewis brinson so we've seen the best unless some crazy stuff happens in the next couple seasons i feel like we've we've kind of maxed out what we've seen from lewis brinson again not a bad not a bad career right you know 1600 hits so far 200 plus home runs the doubles were through the roof you know he's stealing bases at a pretty elite level in today's baseball you know 20 plus stolen bases for a majority of the seasons and i mean he's just again he's not doing it terribly right like he's just been very very consistent and i feel like that's what you look for in baseball nowadays you're not really yes you want your acunas your tatises and players like that but if you can get a guy who can give you 10 years of just really good baseball which is what brinson's giving you i feel like you're doing pretty well right like i would actually i take that back really good i would say like good baseball like he's giving you good baseball so let's let's continue let's go a few more seasons see what happens i think he's got three or four more deals left on his as the Marlins win uh, the, the World Series. I feel like he's got a few more years left on his deal. I think it's like three, two or three more years. So we'll check in in a few more years, see what happens. But um, yeah, I feel like we're good so far. Okay, so we're in what, 20, 2033? I almost said in year 12, which I guess makes sense. His 12th year of MLB service time. I mean, he's doing still fairly well. You know, he is going down in rating though. But for the most part, you know, he still, he had like kind of a, not a breakout year, but that year I always talk about where they do really well. Good home runs, good doubles, average was really high, OPS was really high, maybe a little bit of a resurgence in that batting ability. But um, yeah, so far so good. He becomes a free agent next year. So I just kind of wanted to do a little, little bit of a check-in, see how he's doing, but he is definitely falling off in ability and overall. So let's keep moving forward. I obviously, he's not going to retire just yet as just wanted to double check to make sure just in case he did decide to retire but yeah let's go check in one more season and then i think from then on out i feel like the the big one is if he only you know wins like an mvp or something or if he really has a crazy season but from there i think we're just gonna wait till the end of his career but so far not too bad all right final year of his contract 86 overall so i mean he probably gets a one or two more deals but i mean still pretty good numbers i mean like He's raised his OPS for his career above 800, which is good. The av or the on-base percentage has been sitting around 350, and the average is still around 274. But yeah, and he's still stealing 20 plus bags a year. This is again just really, really consistent, consistent play out of Lewis Brinson. So there it is. We can see if he signs with another team. I doubt it's gonna pop up as like one of the main signings but you know what who knows it, it might happen angels okay he didn't retire with the angels obviously not gonna be in the hall of fame if he didn't retire with anybody so let's just get through like december because i'm assuming he will sign before uh, december is over so let's get through there let's see what happens and we'll see if he's picked a new team maybe he's just signed a, a one-year deal with the angels again but that's kind of what i'm expecting him to to sign maybe a one or two year deal nothing too crazy so let's see where is he he's still in free agency oh okay does he have any offers he doesn't huh that's a little wild I, that's crazy to me I, I thought he would have definitely signed with the team so i guess let's just keep waiting they're back with the marlins back with the marlins on a one-year deal okay let's 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 check it out let's just see how this first season goes all right so first season with the team and he's on the bench gotta love it only had 95 at bats is he better than the current center fielder i mean this guy only got 68 games is this guy an outfielder he is so this it looks like they're just fully split in time with a bunch of different players but yeah he's we've seen the best we've seen the best off the bench though he was really good really good really good 379 average 10 12 ops I mean, the guy had 10 doubles and 36 hits. Ooh, he's so close to 300 home runs, too. That's pretty impressive. I wonder if he's going to get a chance. 15 home runs. I don't want to force it. 
but at the same time it's kind of like i gotta force it right like <laughs> like that's kind of one of those things I'll, pro I'll leave it i'll definitely leave it he didn't retire um and yeah that's let's let's just see let's just keep going i'm not gonna check in for a bit probably until he retires but yeah kind of crazy that it came back to miami all right so he actually retired his first year in free agency like just right off the rip just was like you know what i had a good career and uh, you can see he actually signed one more year with miami 34 games it didn't go great like he got relegated to the minors and things didn't do well but when you look at his numbers that's that's a strong career 800 ops slugging percentage you know it's okay the on base percentage strong and a 275 average are they Hall of Fame numbers? No, they're definitely not. Um, but still a really good career. 285 for home runs, almost 500 doubles, stolen bases at almost 300, and a career war at 73.9. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't. I haven't seen Yelich retire yet, but I mean that's that's a strong career. I still think he could play with those contact numbers. Just throw him in the DH spot, but. This is when he's retired. These are the, the career statistics for him. And I would say, you know what? Strong career, strong career. Was he better than Yelich? I don't think so. Oh, speaking of Yelich. Okay, there he is. There he is. 400 home runs. So, uh, you know what? Yeah, definitely a little bit better than what Brinson put up. But I would say in terms of a trade, it went fairly well. I went fairly well so i think we did pretty good with getting brinson back on track figuring out his career and i hope you did enjoy it obviously we couldn't break the whole yelich is just way too good in franchise situation but brinson i think we turned that career around i hope you enjoyed it of course if you did hit that like button down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content we're so close to 50k let's see if we can hit it by the end of this month of course in the comment section let me know some other like trades that didn't work out or some other players that just didn't really work out let me know maybe we can do another re uh, not a rebuild but kind of like a a redo on the career for a video so that's about it guys i'll catch you in the next one peace